this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan channel. Uh, the asshats at the SEC are continuing to seek to hide information from the public because, of course, they know that if the reality of what they've done behind closed doors gets out, is not going to be good for them. And there are four attorneys within the XRP community who have opined on this, including attorney Jeremy Hogan and attorney John Deaton, so I'll be covering that. Uh, and then there's also this story. Uh, all sorts of crypto media outlets covered this, but here's one headline from the Daily Hobble. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse says $3.7 billion a Wells Fargo violation overshadowed by FTX. And I'll tell you here at the outset of the video, Brad makes a rather salient point. It's interesting. In terms of scope of violations, uh, it's different to whatever degree, but when you're, when you're talking in, you know, multiple billions of dollars, my gosh, it's incredible, the fallout and, and the harmed people, the destroyed lives. And, you know, the FTX all over headlines, and deservedly so. But for something like this, which is, you know, if not as bad, it can't be that far off, at least in terms of the number of lives destroyed. It's just interesting that you're not going to hear a peep out of this from most platforms. Or if you do hear a peep, this is going to be a peep. And I'm going to leave it at that. But before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. And so uh, let's jump into this first topic. And uh, there's a story here from the Crypto Basic uh, titled, Attorney Hogan is curious to know the content of Hinman's documents as SEC insists they are privileged. And I'm just going to go to the source of the material that they were talking about here. And it is indeed the case that after everything that has unfolded, for in particular over the last 12 months, uh, the SEC is still insisting that the Hinman emails um, are, are privileged. Now, don't forget here <laughs> that the court has multiple times said, no, they're not privileged. And don't forget that the SEC complied with a court order to hand over the Hinman emails because they are not privileged. They're still asserting that they're privileged, though, and I'm filing at this point. If I'm the judge, I'm just like, oh, my God, I'm just rolling my eyes at this point. And so um, shout out and credit to attorney James K. Filan, member of the XRP community, shared this most recent legal document, and he wrote... The SEC has filed its motion to seal certain documents filed in connection with the motions for summary judgment. Now, um, attorney Jeremy Hogan retweeted that. And, uh, and last night, attorney Hogan wrote the following. The SEC is still arguing that the Hinman emails are privileged despite losing that issue about 100 times already. Blows my mind. And makes me re-curious, is that a word? about what is in them. Uh, yeah, exactly. And by my count, it's not 100. I think it's more like 11 billion times that, uh, <laughs> that the, uh, the court has found that, uh, no, these, these emails are, are not privileged. Uh, so, you know, it's a closer number anyway. And yeah, it, it certainly does make you wonder what the hell is in here. And we already know Ripple CEO Brad Garling has, has, has cited publicly that whatever is in there is shocking. That's the word that he used, shocking. Now, hopefully we get to see it but at some point in the future, but it's not a guarantee. And so you can see here's what <laughs> um, uh, attorney Jeremy Hogan shared part of this legal filing uh, from the SEC on your screens. This is the one from yesterday, which reads in part as follows. This is from the SEC. The SEC respectfully maintains that the Hinman speech documents are protected by these privileges. That's right protected by privilege. But if these documents were to become part of the public record, the SEC would be foreclosed from making any such argument in the future, on appeal, in this litigation, or in other litigation. And so look, it's obviously absurd that the SEC is still arguing this. Um, there is another perspective though. In fact, one attorney uh, within the XRP community was explaining that in a technical sense, even though we all agree that, you know, the privilege arguments are nonsense. In a technical sense, the SEC's approach could be defendable, and I'll get to that in just a second. Um, but first, I want to share this from Attorney John Deaton. He said on this topic, the SEC seeks to seal from the public the entire Hinman drafts and emails regarding his speech 
although the judge declared them not protected by privilege. I wonder why. Folks, there's something in here. Well, we know that. There is something. To what degree is it damning? I don't know, but enough that they're still fighting this damn thing. And so then you have this from attorney Bill Morgan, another attorney within the XRP community. He wrote the following. SEC is arguing that they haven't waived privilege against the world because they handed them to Ripple as ordered but under the protective order without giving up appeal rights. I am not sure how the SEC argues it haven't waived privilege when the court found they're not privileged. On this, uh, on this court's findings, there is no privilege to waive or not waive. I get the appeal point. If it can still appeal, the issue of privilege is not finally resolved, but once those appeal rights are exhausted, how can it maintain the documents are privileged in another proceeding as a ground to seal them in this case? It is not a question of the value of the decision in this case as a precedent, but a question of res judicata. And I had to look that up because I'm not a lawyer, so I was like, res judicata, what, what in the ever-loving hell is that? And so I, I, I looked that up just for all of you, so you don't have to look it up yourselves. And that just means... Uh, a matter that has been adjudicated by a competent court and may not be pursued further by the same party. So uh, that means that it's finished. So it makes you wonder here if the SEC is still arguing this. Isn't it probable that, or at least at a minimum possible, that the SEC actually is going to appeal it, it somewhere at some point something having to do with these him and emails? Methinks the answer may very well be yes. And here's what attorney Fred Rispoli had to say, another member of the XRP community. He said, the issue is confidentiality, not privilege, which argument the SEC has lost. I can't fully comment because I haven't read the cases the SEC cites, but if they generally support the position that privilege issues lost at trial court while disclosed should nevertheless be kept confidential should the losing party appeal, then it would make sense for Judge Torres to agree that him and emails should stay redacted in pleadings and order closed-door testimony during trial. But I haven't read the cases, and SEC may be exaggerating. All right, so he's, he's basically stating here, if this is the SEC's position, hey, we haven't exhausted all of our appeals, then, uh, you know, as far as Judge Torres is concerned, uh, per perhaps something like this might be found to, to be reasonable. And again, me not having a legal background, I don't know what would be par for the course. I don't know what would be perceived as reasonable, which is why I'm just reporting what the attorneys within our community are having to say specifically about this. But it is interesting either way. You don't have to be attorney to you know kind of put two and two together here in the sense that if they're still arguing this, there's a reason. So we can speculate about the reason. I'm thinking uh, they might uh, might want to continue to battle on this. Now, to what degree and where uh, remains to be seen here. But in theory, it could make sense to not make this uh, information public, at least not at this juncture in time. Now, that's not what I want, obviously. I think it should be out there. This is not me defending the SEC. I'm just saying in terms of uh, legal standards from what I'm seeing from attorneys that actually potentially could be reasonable. I just don't like it. <laughs> you know, and I'm sure you don't either because there's, it's, there's disgusting stuff in there. According to uh, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse, I'm just wondering what. But there's still actually, you know, just to even see that there's a new headline, like, oh my God, the SEC arguing that Hinman documents are privileged at the end of 2022. What in the ever loving hell? Just one of those things. Into the next topic now from the Daily Huddle. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse says $3.7 billion Wells Fargo violation overshadowed by FTX. Ripple Lab CEO Brad Garlinghouse says that most people are obsessing over recent debacles in the crypto industry while ignoring what's going on in the traditional finance world. Garlinghouse says that there is a wildly disproportionate amount of attention directed at the collapse of crypto exchange FTX compared to banking giant Wells Fargo, which just paid $3.7 billion in fines for mismanaging customer funds. And so Brad Garlinghouse uh, shared the following tweet. The world is appropriately outraged by SBF and FTX's fraud. But when Wells Fargo mismanages billions in customer funds as well, it's barely a blip on the radar. Food for thought. Yeah, exactly. So to, to highlight just how bad and serious is, I wanted to share with you some of the specifics uh, from this story from CNBC titled Wells Fargo agrees to pay uh, to $3.7 billion settlement with CFPB over consumer abuses. And, and just as I'm going through this, just compare this and the coverage that it's getting 
to uh, what's happened with FTX. And again, I'm not saying that there should be less coverage of FTX. I'm just noting that there should be more coverage of this because people have been outright, uh, well, in some cases, ruined financially. And you'll see. So check this out. Wells Fargo agreed to a $3.7 billion settlement with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, that's the CFPB, over customer abuses tied to checking accounts, mortgages, and auto loans, with some of the misconduct happening as recently as this year. The company was ordered to pay a record $1.7 billion civil penalty and more than $2 billion to customers with 16 million accounts, the CFPB said in a statement. The San Francisco-based bank said in a separate statement that many of the required actions tied to the settlement were already completed. And then check out this quote. This is insane. The bank's illegal conduct led to billions of dollars in financial harm to its customers and, for thousands of customers, the loss of their vehicles and homes. And homes, folks. Consumers were illegally assessed fines, uh, I'm sorry, fees rather, and interest charges on auto loans and uh, and mortgage loans uh, had their cars wrongfully rep repossessed and had payments to auto and mortgage loans misapplied by the bank, end quote. So, you know, silver lining here, at least there's a solvent business that you can sue into oblivion once they misbehave like this. So at least some customers are getting some stuff back. Um, to, to what degree that's better in terms of remedy and then, then what we'll see in the FTX case, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's a fair and just remedy. Hopefully it would be, and, and again, Wells Fargo solvent here. As far as FTX, yes, at some point it is assumed that customers are going to get something back, but it's probably going to be pennies on the dollar, unfortunately, at this point, because there's a hole in the balance sheet. There's there's not a solvent company to actually do the right thing and pay the stuff back. There's just the money's gone. But but wow. So anyway, points not lost on me. Uh, you know, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse uh, making a perfectly reasonable point, but there's there's fraud all over the place. So like, I guess the question is here. Uh, should we just um, outlaw uh, loans, uh, you know, auto loans and, uh, and and mortgages? Should we just outlaw? Because again, if we apply the logic to crypto, I think we think about what the SEC, like Kim Jong Un, or what the hell is he arguing? I mean, and and many senators, there's Elizabeth Warren. Crypto's bad, obviously, right? And so if the thing's bad, you just you just outlaw, it, right? Or do you look at the people who are behaving in illegal ways and not think that the underlying asset or financial instrument, in this case? Is is uh is what should not exist. Maybe it's not the asset or the financial instruments. Maybe it's the illegal human behavior. What do you think? But again, this type of thought process this is what you see time and again from these idiots who somehow make it to really high places. I uh, is what it is, folks. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say. Or right? That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.